Tonight we improvise. Today is the seventh Sunday of Easter and we're suspended between the Ascension and Pentecost, the culmination of the Easter season. We hear these Last Supper words spoken by Jesus, words of oneness, unity, interconnectedness, wholeness. The apostles have been with Jesus all night. They've broken bread together. They've drunk wine with him. He's washed their feet. He tells them this extraordinary parable about the vine and the branches, and he and them, and the sacred earth, the earth's all connected, all one with them. As though poised between heaven and earth, still in the world, yet no longer in it, Jesus no longer speaks with them, but turns to God in this sublime prayer that they may be completely one. This ultimate reality, God, Jesus called Father. And we get a glimpse of the intimacy of their relationship in this prayer. What we cannot miss here at this moment, friends, is that this is the night before he died. Jesus seems to be going to his death with clarity and grace and confidence, faithful to God in the end, ever focused on his mission and treating his death as an expression of service to his friends. Jesus embodied as well as anyone, to paraphrase the prophet Micah, what God demands of every human being, you must be doing justice and loving kindness, mercy, and walking humbly with your God. Jesus modeled humility, its groundedness, its clear-sightedness, seeing things as they are and acting accordingly. Jesus is praying for all those who will believe because of hearing the word of the apostles after he departs, that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us. Jesus' prayer reaches all the way down through the ages for all who have been touched by God's word. All the way down to today, he intends his prayer for us. Here, today, on the eve of his death, Jesus is praying for us. Jesus is praying for Edie Bulliard, too. For her family, godparents, friends, and all who are here hearing the gospel today. In a little while, we're going to join Edie as she receives the sacrament of baptism. We'll witness the vows and commit to doing all we can to support this child in her life in Christ. And though this baptism is going to be a little bit different than uh, the one in Philippi uh, after the, the jail is destroyed by the, the earthquake and Paul and Silas's chains are, are, un, are loosed and the jailer comes in overwhelmed in a conversion experience right at that moment and he's baptized right that very night. He and his whole family. It's going to be a little different than that.
one of those vows is to renounce the evil powers of this world, which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God. Evil powers. Sounds archaic, doesn't it? Almost melodramatic. Friends, lately, we are being increasingly challenged by evil, aren't we? In our country, in our world, in our communities, whether it is brutal violence and killing against innocent citizens in Ukraine, in a black neighborhood in Buffalo, Taiwanese churchgoers in Southern California, or 10-year-old kids, 19 of them, and two of their children, two of their teachers in a school in Uvalde, Texas. It is all the same evil. It separates us. Trafficking in fear, domination, Christian nationalism tied to white supremacy, gun violence, opposing Christ's peace, opposing Christ's love, opposing Christ's oneness. In the culmination of the season of Easter, my friends, as a resurrected people, we need to find resurrection hope. I see some right in the front row here. Resurrection hope. So that the love with which you have loved me, Jesus prayed for us, may be in them and I in them. The servant leadership of all the baptized in our congregation seeks and serves Christ in all persons, strives for justice and peace among all people, and respects the dignity of all and every human being, that all may be one. The other night, about a dozen people from three different faith communities, all saints, um, Ikar, a Jewish community, and Thads, an emergent uh, Episcopal church, converged on a laundromat on Adams Boulevard. We met up with about 18 uh, local uh, people from the neighborhood, some unhoused and others of very low income. Then we met one-on-one -on -one at the washing machines, and we let the laundry love fly. It is a simple, humble service which hopefully fosters interaction, goodwill, and a reminder that we are all connected. I got to know all about one young man's uh, church. His name was Trayvon. He uh, showed me his phone and he played a, a, a sermon that uh, his pastor uh, was, was giving. He's devoted to his church and I have to admit that this Pastor Martin was pretty good. We talked about the best kind of oatmeal, the best kind of pancakes, and we both realized we liked blueberries on, on them. By the end, Trayvon had some clean clothes that he'll feel better about wearing them and might be perceived differently when he shows up for a job interview. We both walked away with an experience of being made whole by human connection. We don't go to heaven, said Richard Rohr. We learn how to live in heaven now. And no one lives in heaven alone. Either we learn how to live in communion with other people and with all that God has created, or quite simply, we're not ready for heaven. If we want to live an isolated life, trying to prove that we're better than everybody else, or believing that we're worse than everybody else, we're already in hell. We have been invited, even now, even today, even in this very moment, to live consciously in the communion of saints, in the presence, in the body, 
in the life of the eternal and eternally risen Christ. This must be an almost perfect way to describe salvation itself and a beautiful way to culminate the season of Easter. Thank you. Amen.